Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, today, I'm doing an experiment. So some of you might remember this guy here. These are the uh, PCB fuse holders. So I can put four automotive fuses in there. Uh, input on this side, output positive, output negative. Each one of these four circuits are individually fused. But I was afraid that the thin copper on here might drop too much voltage. So uh, this here is a little setup to figure out how much voltage we're going to drop. Now what I mean by voltage drop? Well, um, a conductor, so either a wire or copper in this case, has a certain resistance. And that resistance only comes into play once we run a good amount of current through it. And anybody who remembers back to their Ohm's law knows that current times resistance equals voltage. And so uh, these traces might actually consume a little bit of voltage and that means that they'll be less available for your load. Now in this case here, I've got my Readin RD6018 providing 12 volts up to 18 amps to this unit. This unit here is going to pull a maximum of about 130 to 140 watts, maybe 150 if we're lucky. This ANEG AN8008 multimeter uh, has these special leads that I've crafted. It'll tell us the voltage here at the terminals. So basically, uh, it should be this voltage minus this voltage will give us the voltage drop. But just to make it more clear, I have my Kaiweetz HT118A with the probes in hand where we can go probe where the voltage is missing. So when I probe like here, basically the voltage path goes comes in to here. Uh, through a, through this path here, through this uh, fuse here on this side, across the fusible link, down the other side, across this path to here, to the load, and then back this way here, back to the negative. And wherever I put my two probes, that'll tell me the voltage loss between those two points. So if I put it between here and here, that means that kind of up to here, from here down across up to here, that's how much voltage I lost in that little area. And then I can keep going further and further. It's it's really not that complicated. So first of all, let's turn on this guy to volts and we'll turn on this guy to volts. We will turn on the voltage here. And now here we go. We have 12 volts here, uh, so 12.01 and the read-in shows 11.99 uh, so basically 12 volts and 12 volts there so we're not losing any voltage because we are not pulling we're not drawing any current see it says 12 volts even on here I don't know if you're able to see that but I hope so all right now I'm gonna start pulling a load we're gonna go coarse first I'm gonna pull a couple amps maybe two amps okay up 1.92 Gonna bring the fine adjust up. Okay, so two amps, we got 11.9 here, 11.9 here, 11.9 here. So it's pretty close, but if I check between the voltage in and the voltage out, yeah, we're not losing much voltage at all. The, the Kiwi says we got 12 millivolts lost. And if we check between the negative run from here to here, got like four or so millivolts lost kind of nothing at all um, across the fuse now the fuse will drop a little bit of voltage because that's how it that's how it heats up um, let's see we only have about it's hard to poke right on top of here yeah four millivolts of loss here okay two amps isn't bad let's climb up we'll go to about five amps now uh, 4.88. Go just under, just over 5 amps. Uh, we're showing 11.8 here, 11.9 here, and 11.99 here. So I feel like we're losing about 20 millivolts. Let me just check what the voltage at the load is. 11.85. So yeah, we are losing some voltage here. So I'm going to check from here to here. We're only losing 31 millivolts. Let's see from here to here. We're using losing 10 millivolts. Hmm. Interesting. So 11.9. That agrees with that. 
an 11.8 here. I just wonder if we're actually losing voltage in our leads here. We're, you know what? We're losing more voltage in our 14 gauge wire. That's not very long, about a foot, a foot and some long. We're losing more than in this circuit board completely. Yeah. So honestly, this is, I feel like this is not even going to be a big deal, but let's, let's crank it up here. We can go up to, let's see if we get a hundred Watts out of this. The uh, fan on the read-in just turned on. Oops. Actually over 100 watts. I wasn't paying attention. 102.8, so that's 8.81 watts. Here we have 11.6 volts over here. So let's see how much we're losing in our circuit board here. So on the positive side, 56 millivolts. And on the negative side, 18 millivolts. That's negligible. That's negligible. What do we have here? 11.9 from here. I feel like we're losing more on our wires than anything else. Yeah, it's... Uh, so let's see, from here to here, 55 millivolts. From here to here, 55 millivolts. So that's a hundred. That's a hundred millivolts, right there, huh? So our 14 gauge wire is actually dropping more than our fuse board. So it seems like it's perfectly fine to pull a hundred watts out of this. Let's go up. See how high we can go with this. Probably not very high. Got 110. 100 and seems like 113 watts is our max. So 9.74 amps. Now let's check now. Positive side we are losing 66 millivolts. On the negative side we are losing 21 millivolts. And on our 14 gauge wire. We're losing 64 millivolts. So honestly, the loss in this board is slightly more than a 14 gauge wire. And obviously, you know, you could lower, there's probably some losses from the read in up to here with this 14 gauge wire, but we could probably minimize that by running two wires, which is why I have the two positives here and the two negatives here. So yeah, it seems like, I mean, just through the fuse. So through the fuse, we're losing 28 millivolts. And through the positive path, we're losing 66. So a third of that, more than a third of that is actually just through the fuse itself. So if you want a fuse, that's just the price you're gonna have to pay. And I don't feel like any of this is getting warm. I mean, I'm pulling as much wattage as I can no, this board is ice cold. So a two-sided board, uh, one ounce copper, the way I designed this, this is perfectly fine for 100 watts. Um, the only way I can test it more now is to get a second load tester. And I mean, I don't have one, but I might end up buying one eventually, I guess. Maybe I can get a sponsor to send me another one to test this some more. But at the moment, this thing for 100 watts, it's pretty good. So hopefully I can figure out some other way to test it harder. And um, until then, I'm pretty impressed. Thanks for watching.